Uh, before we get to any of the, that, let's talk about Sir Francis Drake. Uh, going to go straight over uh, to uh, what is now going to be his regular slot. He's going to join us uh, every Tuesday. Uh, Connor Tomlinson, Conservative commentator. Good evening, Connor. Good evening, Kevin. You really haven't had the opportunity to get rid of me, have you? Uh, no, we've been trying, mate, but you, you've stuck to us. Uh, you've grown on us. A bit like fungus, really. I'm an adorable uh, leech. <laughs> uh, no, I'm really pleased that you'll be joining us on a regular basis, and we're going to try and come up with an interesting topic, uh, although I trust you to be able to do that on your own back any day of the <laughs> week. Uh, but we're going to talk about Francis Drake, uh, Sir Francis Drake, the Elizabethan hero. Uh, he is a son, I didn't realise this, of Tavistock, in West Devon, uh, where there is a statue there. Uh, and from now on, he's going to have a plaque on his statue explaining what an horrific slave trader he was, that he embarked on many horrific slave trading expeditions. Uh, uh, there were 89 objections to this uh, plaque and one person wanted it. Guess who won the argument? It was the one who wanted the plaque. I mean, what I think, Connor, more than anything this indicates in a town the size of Tavistock, I was down there that fairly recently, it's quite a big place, uh, is there's apathy surrounding this sort of nonsense. Why have we got to try and cancel or explain a national hero like Sir Francis Drake? Well, I suppose after all the scenes that have been going on in Afghanistan all week, a bunch of race-obsessed communists trying to undermine British history is almost refreshing. I will say... <laughs> this is that comforting, wanna... isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 you know, it's like coming home for Christmas. Um, I will say, I might knock your feet a little bit here, Kevin, mm. but I am not opposed in principle to having more information, historical plaques, otherwise, surrounding a controversial historical figure. Air quotes. Now, obviously, nobody condemns, uh, nobody endorses slavery. Everybody condemns it. I do find it very interesting that they didn't include some of his other more morally questionable actions. I know he had a man executed for witchcraft in quite a, a controversial naval legal case at the time. But the issue people are going to have with this is the principle surrounding it. Is it done in earnest? Is it done to educate people? And is it accompanied, for example, by a plaque which elevates Sir Francis Bacon, uh, not Sir Francis Bacon, Sir Francis Drake, there we go, I'm getting people confused, um, for his role in defending Britain from the Spanish Armada, and that enabled Britain to be a sovereign nation right up until the point where they went around the world and led an expedition, a, a global crusade, to end slavery. So without his defence of the UK, we wouldn't have had the British Empire ending slavery hundreds of years later. And the reason is no. And uh, uh, the reason for them not accompanying those that pairing those historical knowledge is because it's not done in good faith it's done to recharacterize all of british history uh, as racially prejudiced and gloss over the morally complex issues uh, the good and the bad by just saying we are an inherently systemically racist country and always have been and so i can't really endorse this plaque in good faith i don't oppose it in principle but i don't endorse the people the the ideology motivating the people that would want it or person in this case i don't mind the idea of more information about a statue uh, but not if it's inspired by this sort of nonsense uh, and i object uh, to being asked to object to someone from 300, 500 years ago, uh, 300 years ago, who uh, participated in the slave trade uh, because that was a sign of the times. Sir Francis Drake, uh, like uh, Edward Colston from Bristol, these were children, men of their times. In those days, the slave trade was quite normal. Why and how can we condemn them uh, for, with the values of our times? You know, it's very, it's all very well. You know, we might as well say, you know, those Stone Age guys, they were terrible the way they used to club people to death uh, with those big wooden clubs. Uh, we should cancel them. I mean, you know, you cannot judge people of the past by the standards of today. To do so is absolutely moronic. And to try and link our present situation to the past as if we are somehow culpable as a society and the society is comprised of individuals, as individuals, as an offshoot of that, the idea that we are somehow at fault, we have benefited from the uh, the slave trade being a part of Sir Francis Drake's legacy, 
and therefore he contributed to the existence of England today. And so we in England today have benefited from his involvement in the slave trade. That's the same idea as having the sins of the father being visited on the son. That's treating people as collectives and also treating people based on their, their racial and national heritage, rather than as individuals who can evaluate their history and make moral claims on their own. And I do find it very interesting as well that this has become very ideologically partisan. They said this is as a result of the Black Lives Matter Obviously, that's a non-controversial statement, so we'll say BLM, based on the organization, movement from last summer. The BLM organization is avowedly in favor of critical race theory, which balkanizes people by their race, and they're avowedly Marxist. So I find it very funny how they don't go to Marx's grave and defile that or put a plaque up saying, <laughs> hey, here's here's some quotes about what Marx said about black people. Here's what some quotes about what Marx said about Jewish people. Uh, here's some quotes saying from Marx saying, we should have a revolution so bloody it makes the French Revolution look like child's play. Because I would think they're much more destructive. And if you look at the legacy of socialist countries, they have much more of a larger impact than Sir Francis Drake's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. But what this is really about, point taken there, Connor, and good point, uh, th this is about these plaques are invariably about undermining national heroes, uh, people that people look up to. Uh, it's about uh, kind of trying to gnaw away, chew away at the fabric of our traditions. Uh, so we had Enid Blyton the other day uh, that they she had to have an explanatory plaque put on her blue plaque uh, because she had questionable racial views. Uh, and as I say, I cannot buy into the idea that we have to say Sir Francis Drake or Edward Colston or any slave trader of the past was an evil, uh, amoral person. They were just people of their times. Uh, how arrogant of us to assume that our values uh, should be imposed on them. How do we know that in a hundred years time or 200 years time, uh, a different set of people might not be looking at us and judging us by the values of their time? It's a, a, an a asinine process, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm, I guarantee that the complacency on things like the Uyghurs, for example, um, there's even, you know, some of the more militant vegans will turn around and go in a hundred years time, we're all eating synthetic meat and, you know, living off clouds, um, that our, our track record on eating animals is going to be so detestable that we'll be looked back on in the same way as the slave trade. So to try and transpose our more evolved moral ideals at the time onto those people isn't fair. And also, to be fair, to say at the time this is just the institution that was that was prevalent, um, the abolitionist movements, the arguments were being made, and that was seen, for example, when everyone says, "Oh, well, in America, let's undermine Mount Rushmore, let's remake it, etc." Yeah. Because some of the founding fathers were slave traders. Well, a lot of the founding fathers were trying to change that institution at the time, including Thomas Jefferson. Funnily enough, he in the original draft of the, the Declaration of Independence. And the Constitution, he wanted to include a provision which stopped slave trading. Um, same with Benjamin Franklin. He led the Pennsylvania abolitionists, and, and he was very much involved in the foundation of the country. So you can't tie the, the morals that people were steeped in at the time to the country and then impose that on us and also say, mm. um, in my moral righteousness, we can erase the legacy of this person because I know better as a modern. And this has gotten so ridiculous in this in this Maoist Cultural Revolution crusade. I don't know if you're aware, but the University of Wisconsin Rock that has been branded so racist, they spent $50,000 of the U <laughs> university's budget to remove it. And the reason they said the rock was racist <laughs> is because a couple of hundred years ago, um, when the university newspaper was covering it there was a journalist who referred to the rock using the n-word and they said therefore the rock itself is racist yeah. even though it wasn't named after a racist it had no racial prejudice it's just that one man called it a racist epithet and so it has to be removed and now if that's the standard well that's pretty worrying that any old idiot can go around calling something a racist epithet and suddenly it's racist the next amount of years yeah. time yeah and what right do we have uh, to sanitize history oh we don't like that uh, therefore we'll cancel it will change it. And these plaques are never to, as you said earlier, I don't mind a bit more information, but they're mm. never really to provide information. They're to undermine the people that they're the statues of, to say, oh, well, you may at first sight admire Sir Francis Drake, uh, but uh, actually he was a slave trader. He was an awful man, really dreadful man. That's what it's all about. Uh, and uh, just a last point, Connor, you know, this is a fairly big town, Tavistock in West uh, 
uh, Devon. Uh, uh, 89 objections to the placing of this new plaque. Uh, one letter in support. It's interesting they went with the one uh, and ignored the 89. That's a strange approach to democracy. Uh, but uh, more to the point, in a big town, uh, 90 responses shows an awful lot of apathy about the whole idea of this woke revisionism, doesn't it? It's very much a false ball concern, especially when the the issues facing Britain at the moment are less so about uh, the historic evils of our past, which we somehow can't redeem ourselves from and, and haven't done enough from, you know, launching a crusade around the world to end slavery. And we didn't even stop paying off that till I believe it's the mid 80s, wasn't it? Um, so I think we've done more than enough to make up for the evils of some individuals that have happened in history mm. um and it shows how disconnected these issues are these these mm. culturally marxist let's call it out what it is issues are from the concerns of everyday people yeah. um so I, th I think the the economic state of the country is a bit more of a, a concern than what statues we should topple next I, I mean i i actually uh, utterly do not care whether or not sir francis drake was a slave trader or Edward Colston or any of these other people uh, with connections to alleged connections to slavery. And by the way, some of the connections can be so uh, tenuous. tenuous that you wouldn't believe it. Uh, Ted Hughes, uh, the working class poet laureate who was born above a news agents in a little uh, coal town in, uh, in the north, uh, he got, uh, there was an attempt to cancel him because he had some relatives from about three hundred years ago who were connected to the slave trade it gets absurd but i don't care i don't care this is 300 years ago why should i care well that's the exact practice that mao used in in china and still going on in north korea today essentially your grand your grandparents if they commit a crime the the children of the children can also be placed in prison because they believe that your your class is so tainted that you are irredeemable and that's the same approach taken if my relatives commit a mortal sin why should I be punished for it? It doesn't. It doesn't run in my blood. We're, we're not all the same people. Um, we can deviate and evolve either as individuals or as a society. We've moved away from those values now, and so to project it onto a figure in hindsight um, is uh, an act of moral hubris, and it also shows a really childish mentality to say, "Oh, anything in the present that matters, and everyone before me was so under-evolved in all facets that I know better." It, it's a real millennial arrogance, I think, that that characterises this. Totally agree. Uh, great first outing there, Connor. Uh, we'll do it again <laughs> next week. I might get in touch Always with you before that. Always a pleasure to talk, Connor Tomlinson, there, a conservative commentator and a new regular contributor to this excellent show. He said immodestly.